Welcome back. This is K24 this morning. We're looking at the big stories of the day and we are taking your tweets as well at K24 TV. We're putting up our WhatsApp number on your screen so you can WhatsApp us as well as we discuss uh, the big issues of the day. A couple of tweets as people wake up and get ready for the day. McLeod Phillips saying, good morning, fam. Uh, ready for the show. David Omwami, 001, is watching. Good morning. Uh, Joseph Ongaya, watching from Naivasha, Hell's Gate. The show is lit. I'm really waiting for the debate to Shikamoto. Gideon Wanyoke from Ruaka Bypass, uh, present. Let uh, the debate begin. And it will, and it already has, uh, Gideon, so you can chime in as well on the conversation at K24 TV. Uh, right before we took the break, we are talking about how we can actually delink government and, uh, you know, government's delivery and politics. The last time we had the president talking about uh, government delivery with his principal assistant, mm -hmm. he had said that if there's a project, and as uh, mm -hmm. Jero had alluded to, that's where Tangatanga Tanga came from, mm -hmm. if there's something happening in your area mm -hmm. and you feel that it hasn't been addressed, Kunawuki Jana na Tanga Tanga, mm. and that's how it came up. Mm. But it so seemed even in the following up of the development and the service agenda, politics still crept in there. Mm. Maybe I'll ask you the same question. How, how do you link these, these two aspects moving forward? You know, sometimes we forget that we put systems in place for purpose. We actually expect a parliament that should be uh, oversighting the executive in its delivery. And if parliament was working as it should, then I think you'd be able to an extent mm -hmm. to delink um, uh, the, the, the politics from the work of the executive because they would then be holding the CSS accountable. But what we have seen continually in the, in the, in the country is, remember the days of uh, when NYL started? you find the entire political um, uh, politicians. I remember in particular some of the politicians appearing when, um, when the, the CS then, uh, now governor, was being questioned and they're the ones more vocal than the CS herself. And mm -hmm. that was the politicians who should be oversighting that. Um, we have seen that continue, continue over time. Mm -hmm. And even now, we have seen parliament actually um, becoming a toothless body with even the, uh, what do you call them, what do you call them? Uh, English is going out of the mm -hmm. roof today. But when, before they, 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 a person is appointed, they mm. need to appear before mm. parliament. The committees. And mm. the committees that they have to appear before actually do a very, mostly a very shoddy job. And it is just standard, accepted that at the end of the day they are going to accept this. Mm. When there's any question arising, it becomes... Um, uh, a minting opportunity. Mm -hmm. Look at the time we had the sugar scandal and then the stories that came out from the Senate when we had issues of land from different um, uh, sectors and the issues that come out from the committees that are expected to be oversighting. So therefore the executive, uh, which is seen as the CSS, who should be uh, delinked from the politics of the day, end up playing politics because they know if you do not play politics, when you go there, you will not right. have support. Right. So I think that if we had the systems working, properly as they should, mm -hmm. we may see less of this. Right. But unfortunately, that is not the case. Right. And of course, uh, we'll take your views as well on K24 TV as far as that's concerned. I want us to move briefly to page two of your people daily. Uh, I put says, wrong cops to blame for rise in extrajudicial killings. I put chairperson Anne Makoria was addressing um, uh, the press yesterday on excesses, excessive use of or force by police officers. But very many people have seen this before. They've heard these utterances before. Uh, from what Gerard spoke about uh, with Jay Kwart, we saw what happened at Kasa. Rani in Mwiki, uh, as far as the demonstrations for the roads are concerned, the shooting that happened in Majengo and that was caught on camera as well. But the more we see these instances, we wonder, is Ipoa really toothless uh, in this uh, particular affair? Because it's always probing, but people feel justice still hasn't been served as far as uh, police successes are concerned, Ben. Of course, there, are, there, are, there have been a, a few successes coming from Ipoa. You remember the case of the police officers who shot the young girl in, in the coast? Mm -hmm. uh, a while ago. And as we speak, actually, there are quite a number of police officers who are serving jail term mm -hmm. uh, based on their misconduct. Right. Uh, most of the times, especially misuse of uh, firearms or mm -hmm. misuse, uh, using excessive force mm -hmm. on um, uh, civilians. Uh, but but on the, on the, real, the reality on the ground is that um, since the adoption of the 2010 Constitution, uh, we missed an opportunity to uh, emphatically reform the National Police Service. To a large extent, what we changed were the, the names from the Kenya Police Force to the mm. National, National Police, Police Service, Service and mm. uh, the fanfare and all that. Uh, but the, the texture and the character and the content of that service 
is, is yet to meet the standards that were espoused in the 2010 constitution. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you practical scenarios. You need just to interact with the average policeman out there. And you can tell, in terms of training, in terms of uh, understanding their role and objectives, we still have a very long way to go. We have seen a lot of brutality being meted out, especially on university students. You remember what happened at the University of Nairobi, mm -hmm. uh, at the hostels. You remember the, the incident at Maseno. Mm -hmm. Recently, we had the Jomo Kenyatta University. And we have seen even uh, mild demonstrations uh, where citizens just show up. Uh, like now, the case last week mm -hmm. in uh, Mwiki Kasarani. I mean, it was totally uncalled for, uh, for police officers to deploy uh, the, those uh, water cannons. And residents are only protesting what is rightfully theirs. But there is an issue that we have failed to completely address. And this was uh, one of the key areas that the president promised back in 2013. Uh, we have to agree that most of our police officers are still living in very deplorable conditions. Mm -hmm. The, they, are, they are first human beings, even before we talk about being police officers or any other profession. And most of them, you, re, you realize uh, that there are challenges in terms of housing, in terms of very poor salaries that they receive. Yet, as you can realize, as you'll agree, the economy is not actually in tandem or, or the, their salaries are not in tandem with actually the economic challenges they are facing. They have children in school like all of us. They have medical, in, uh, medical in, uh, obligations like all of us. And that uh, puts a strain. In fact, the, the fact that most of them have resorted to either leasing out their firearms or other paraphernalia, including uniforms, or directly being involved in criminal activities is evidence that uh, we have a bro broken down society. They have seen very senior politicians who have evidently stolen from the public or done criminal activities and get away. Mm -hmm. So as law enforcement officers, they are, that actually tends to in, instill confidence in junior officers that we can also do things and get away with the same. Mm -hmm. So that culture is actually what needs again to begin to change from the top. And that's why I initially indicated the challenge and the back stops with the CS, Matiangi. Mm -hmm. If it is evident, for example, that Matiangi can disobey court orders blatantly and nothing happens to him, then what would stop a DCIO, for example, or an OCS in, uh, in, in uh, Saburu who has been issued a court order either to stop a demolition or either to undertake a particular assignment, what stops him also from disobeying the same court order? Right. So this culture really needs to be fixed from the top. And actually the ministry needs to, to begin to treat these officers differently. Let, let, and again, you have noticed the same way we have increased involvement of police officers in criminal activities is the same way we have more police officers either committing suicide or either killing their colleagues and those kinds of... Those are psychological tr challenges that these officers are facing. So the ministry needs really to overhaul not only the training, but also how it is engaging these officers. We need to discard the uh, colonial era mindset that was initially inherited, right. whereby these officers were supposed to be brutes and uh, uh, rogues and mm -hmm. that kind of thing, and begin to engage them as, 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 as a service, okay. not as a force. Jero, um, we've spoken about uh, reforms in the police service. Um, they changed the name, they changed the uniform, um, but it still feels like um, this isn't enough. Is it the reforms that once they're complete, we might have a better uh, service in place. Are we not paying enough attention to the actual needs of the police officers themselves? Because some people say, if you were put in the same condition as this police officer, you'd probably be doing even worse things. Mm -hmm. so. I think a rose by any other name smells just as sweet. So this, I think, works for the police service. You can change their uniform because somebody got some tender to do new uh, uniforms in a horrific shade of, of blue or whatever it is. You can do whatever you want to do. You can rename it. But if uh, systemically nothing has changed, then it will be exactly the same. You know, I was just reading um, what IPOA ha is, is facing. I mean, I almost wonder how big of a body is IPOA because mm -hmm. if they've received 3,237 complaints and, um, and uh, 489 were recommended for further investigation, 57 were forwarded to internal affairs, another 151 cases were taken over by the Directorate of uh, Criminal Investigation. I mean, IPOA has a lot of work to do. And if IPOA is also not backed by a supportive Ministry of Interior, 
what's going to happen? So I would say kudos to IPOA. I mean, I, I have my issues off and on, and, and I, I feel it's not as strong a body as it ought to be. But under the circumstances, it is trying. Mm -hmm. But for how long? When you think 3,237 complaints, and the police service is Utumishikwa, water. Okay. You just know that there's absolutely a disconnect. But when you see how the, how the police officers live, this is incredible. I was at, uh, uh, during, we had a, a small demonstration in July for the switch of KPLC a campaign where we were tear gassed by the police. We did actually give feedback to IPOA. I don't know whether they picked up that case. But we went to Central Police Station uh, because we needed to, to, to look for the release of one of our colleagues who had been arrested. And I saw new, new, new housing uh, uh, blocks for the police officers. And I said, this is perhaps the most decent, uh, besides uh, uh, other than Gigiri, uh, housing um, accommodation I've seen for police officers. So what do you expect from police officers who are also treated like the scum of the earth in terms of their remuneration? That said, it is every individual's personal responsibility to operate with a level of integrity. I cannot say because I'm poor, I steal. Because I'm poor, I extort. Because I'm poor, I'm, I, I accept uh, bribes or I do this or that or the other, or I engage in acts of brutality and take it out on the other members of the population. But I want to come back to something, the extrajudicial killing that happened for me, is, is something unconscionable. And so long as we have Kenyans cheering on the Hesis who apparently clean up neighborhoods by extrajudicially executing uh, known or would-be or alleged criminals, we have a gangland style of, 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 of uh, execution of justice or policing by our National Police Service. Mm -hmm. And so long as those hesis are still in play, so long as we don't allow due process to play out, so long as we don't allow for alleged criminals to be arrested, investigated, prosecuted and incarcerated as per the rule of law, we will always have a rogue, out of control situation. And it's always going to be the poorest uh, neighborhoods, the, the most poor of the Kenyans who get um, uh, uh, most heavily affected and young people, students and other kinds. The young man who was killed in Mwiki, there's a 10 year old boy with a bullet lodged in his brain who has partially lost his sight. This is what you have when you have a police force that is rogue, a police force Force that is under supported and a ministry that is too busy politicking to do its work. Millie, some people say that mm -hmm. this issue starts right from the recruitment phase of police officers when they go around the country. Mm -hmm. From there is where the rain starts beating us. Where do we start looking at uh, this particular point of reform and where do we start? Is it the housing? Is it uh, remuneration? What, what would be the quickest fix to start um, this particular road and jumpstart um, uh, the service? I think that a lot of or considerable reform has taken place within the police service. And I say so because we know, for example, the issue of housing has been in the media over mm -hmm. time. Uh, now they were even being given money so that they can move out of the, of the, um, the housing units and be able to rent and live with Wanainchi, part of the reform agenda. We know that uh, they were brought together under one docket so that we can stop having the Fanya Fujo Wone mm -hmm. and uh, other units <laughs> that would ha cause problems to the Kenyans. But we also know, or we sometimes, though we sometimes forget, that what we envisaged in the Katiba of the police service has been considerably altered over time. The security laws that were amended, uh, the fiasco that happened in Bunge um, that was covered over time, uh, when these laws were being amended and now we feel the impact of it. If you look at the, the, the office of the Inspector General now and the office of the Inspector General, the first one we had mm -hmm. under the current Katiba, there's a big difference. Right now the Inspector General is, uh, is squarely seen as under the, the, the CS interior, whereas it was identified previously as one of the independent offices and the, the, the inspector general's office would be, uh, would be um, approached in, directly, not through the, 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 the CS of interior. So I think that some of these changes that we envisaged, I'm not saying that it was perfect then, even with that change in the Katiba, we had a problem then and there were discussions around the security sector as to whether it was... Um, uh, too quick a change, how are we going to ensure that these uh, uh, different arms of the police were, 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 were brought together in a flawless manner. But nevertheless, the changes that were made have drastically, uh, I think, taken us back 
mm. to the kind of police service that we did not want when we were developing the current constitution. Right. And those are some of the things that we need to look into. We know, for example, now, uh, well, we've already talked about parliament as the oversight body and what, uh, where they're failing, but we have other institutions. We have the Law Society of Kenya, right. and we know that right now they have elections for their president uh, going on. And some of them, those are the things that they're selling, that they would be able to, to, to um, look at laws and amend them. And we hope that these are some of the things, the gains that uh, Wanjiko can have, because right. Law Society um, is a public body, and we anticipate that it should be there for the interest of Wanjiku and Afula. Okay, and yes. of course, um, we'll wait and see how that particular reform also plays out. Uh, I want us to move quickly. Daily Nation is touching on this particular story, and it's all about uh, the rally we are, wait, we are waiting in Mombasa. BBI, Tanga Tanga leaders, handed code of conduct. A quote from uh, Jeanette Mohammed. Uh, they should observe respect and decorum and be ready to engage in the debate of uniting Kenyans. But if they're coming to undermine the meeting, then we're prepared for them. Uh, end of quote on that particular one. This is after MPs allied to uh, DP uh, Ruto said that they would go to Mombasa and would voice their concerns in that same rally. Yeah. As all of this talk goes on, none of these politicians have spoken about how the people of Mombasa will actually get physical copies of the BBI so that they can all read it and talk about it. Or the nine chapters therein that uh, should be spoken about. Mm -hmm. Should you expect anything different in Mombasa, Ben? After what you saw in Kisi, what you've seen in Western, <laughs> now in Mombasa, yeah. or is it going to be another political uh, shouting match uh, on the stage? Believe you me, Jeff, that language of Jeanette is, believe, is, is not the language of building bridges. The language, again, yesterday is also a post by Philip Etale, the communication secretary mm -hmm. of ODM. That is not the language of building bridges. And we must begin to be honest with Kenyans. Uh, so far we have had two major rallies. But when you listen to the speakers, I have not found any content that speaks anything to do with Mwanainchi, with the challenges that Mwanainchi is facing today, and what the proposed solutions are. What we are being treated to is a lot of talk that says nothing. And I think now at this stage Kenyans really need to wake up to certain realities. We are being uh, conditioned to begin to focus too much on 2022, yet we are not bothered about the issues we are facing in January 2020. And this conditioning has continued to happen uh, over time. And when we talk about like uh, Mombasa, you know, there are the inherent issues that even the people of Mombasa have been grappling with, some of them since uh, independence time. And all those are areas that now somebody is uh, trying to tell us that a small document that is about 150 pages is what will solve all that. What we, we are lacking is uh, good manners in our politics, whereby we, we have individuals who genuinely are interested in doing exactly what they are elected to, or individuals who are deliberately doing what they, in their leadership spheres, whether you are in the opposition or in government, doing what we are supposed to do. Now, uh, as you have indicated, we are likely to experience that kind of a shouting match. And indeed, if this building bridges process is genuine, then we would expect actually these people to be very welcoming to any other parties that are not, uh, have not been working with them, to in, who have declared the intention to join them. So as I indicated earlier, we are ending up actually splitting up this country in small pieces. And I don't think it is a healthy either for the economy or even for the politics we are building up. In fact, yesterday I saw somebody after, um, after the headlines about uh, a probe on some land uh, on the deputy president. Of course it is important that these investigating agencies come out. But something is beginning to gradually come off that um, uh, the, the goodwill that the DPP and the DCI enjoyed when they came into office as com as is completely w w uh, waning. And this is because they are coming out as political tools and not genuinely interested in addressing the cross-cutting corruption and uh, impunity issues that we have had. So uh, le let's see, Mombasa will, be, will come and go, we are going to have large crowds, and I don't think that uh, that is going to, uh, to add value to the people. Uh, Jero, I want to come to you before we get yes. uh, into our second break. Uh, the Mombasa address that the president gave um, at the tail end of his speech, he spoke about from now up until the end of his term, the one thing that he will definitely focus on is national unity and cohesion. That's the one thing he will make sure he achieves uh, in his term, uh, or, or rather what's left of his term. With the talk that we're getting, with the political posturing that we're getting, 
Does he get to deliver that? Because it seems from his very own backyard, things aren't united uh, at all. How does he deliver on that uh, particular promise? Well, he can deliver only as well as he has delivered on his promise to fight corruption, on his promise to bring about economic prosperity and so on and so forth. Basically, these are just sound bites. These are speeches that are written for him and he goes ahead and reads them. He is not going to deliver on cohesion. Look at what's happening in this one party called Jubilee, where, as I say, traumatized people like entertainment and we are watching the running battles and the stone throwing virtually and maybe probably literally over time between Tanga Tanga and Kieleweke, yet it's exactly one one party. And I, I just want to say in terms of the coast, we had the Black Monday uh, demonstrations going on mm -hmm. for a while. Not a single, including those who want to bring about peace, cohesion, reconciliation, prosperity, engaged in that. Why was the Black Monday uh, ongoing? Because of the business that had disappeared from the coast, come up to Nairobi, and it's making its way to the so-called uh, 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 port there in Naivasha. The SGR, the last 1.5 billion spent on that train going nowhere, which by the way went through Kedong Farm. And who has bought Kedong Farm? Mm -hmm. you just, so for me, uh, as I always say to His Excellency the President, so long as you're engaged in conflict of interest, especially around things economic, that have an impact on the ordinary Kenyan's factor of production, land being a very important one. Please don't talk to me about prosperity, fighting corruption, because you'd have to fight yourself. And since he's not able to fight himself, he will continue to just give very good sound bites. About the coast, if you look at the students that performed the most poorly, I think it was the KCSE results, or was it KCPE? Mm -hmm. It is coastal counties. You know, uh, many years ago when we were looking at the most underdeveloped counties in Kenya, immediately people would think Kinaturkana and so on and so forth. Do you know, I think Kwale was number two. Not any more. This was about five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. Kwale was number two after Turkana. If you look at the disenfranchisement of coastal populations over the years, you remember MRC those days, mm -hmm. there's always been this sense that they are being left out. But when it's politics, they'll all gather there. I see people in some of the groups, I mean, talking about, oh, let's have a wonderful weekend. Let's enjoy ourselves. Uh, let's go see what they're right. It's a big joke. This is just a road show. This is, you know, those big glories with people singing. and It has ultimately nothing to do mm -hmm. with the people. And, and that is what, what worries me. But let me say something about uh, the Tanga Tanga Kieleweke business. If you're Boxing. I'm not a, I'm not a boxer watch some boxing fights and you're being hammered badly by your opponent. In this case, uh, Kieleweke was hammering Tanga Tanga quite seriously. What does the opponent do when he or she is so bloodied and tired? They Being often hug. Mm -hmm. So I see, I see Tanga Tanga as clinging on to and hugging uh, Kieleweke right now to say, okay, we're in the middle of a fight, but I'm hugging you. And they are in this inextricable uh, 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 um, hug that they will not be able to. So is it a check? A checkmate? I don't know. But as they are busy harassing each other, haranguing each other, I'm sure Junette is waiting to reprise his, his abysmal behavior of, of Bomas, and Mulkomen is sitting there planning his, his rejoinders. So it, it's all side shows at the end of the day when I see people walking every morning, when we are coming here to prepare for the show early in the morning, and I am fortunate enough to be in an Uber, for example, coming down, and you see the people already walking. Mm, At 4.35 in the morning, mm. from Kawangware to industrial area, from Kangemi, the, the, that is always where I come back. If His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta cannot tell me how all his wonderful sound bites are going to impact those people who go and work for 100 bob or 200 bob a day, for me, as far as I'm concerned, he has failed in his mandate. Big Four has failed. He's, he's, he's hurtling fast into his lame duck presidency. And you could even argue that it was a lame duck presidency from 2017. We have a WhatsApp uh, that we want to look at, a couple of WhatsApp messages coming up uh, right now. If you can have them up on the screen as we look at that. If you want to uh, chime in on the conversation uh, as well, you can uh, WhatsApp us. The number will be scrolling at the bottom of your screen. I'm a Kenyan living and working in Kigali, Rwanda, I invite the Inspector General of Police to visit the country for benchmarking. We see police everywhere in the streets and most of them are young people. They are friendly and we feel safe even walking at night. Back home when you see police, uh, it's neither uh, safety on that particular issue uh, at all. That's Osborne uh, Buhere uh, getting us from Kigali. So thank you so much for that particular message. Uh, do you have another one coming in? Uh, Matiangi has lost track and become a politician where Al-Shabaab are terrorizing Kenyans. I don't see the police coming to stay with Wananchi Mtani, considering the, the, the relation between the two. Not that rosy because I haven't seen any since uh, the implementation.
and then on BBI. BBI is not for Wanjiko, but as always, it's turned uh, to be something for the politicians. Keep those views coming in. You can tweet us, of course, as well at K24TV or WhatsApp us. One more before we get into the break. Uh, by now, as per this moment, we must applaud DCI and DPP for what they have done as far as this work is concerned, since they need that political goodwill to continue to work. So, of course, that is something that's very key in terms of their delivery. Keep those uh, WhatsApp messages coming in. We'll look at that and plenty more after the break. This is K24 This Morning.